All right, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Ashutosh Malegaonkar. Uh, I am a principal engineer in DevNet. And one of the uh, things that like, I definitely love about being in DevNet is that you get to play around with a lot of APIs. Okay? And uh, CMX, uh, I mean, the talk is about location services. And one of the things that uh, I have learned over like, hacking around with CMX is uh, that's the thing that I want to actually share with you. And I've, work, I've worked with the BUs, I've developed a couple of apps, and I've also have some of the applications running in a customer. So that has helped me a lot in, in, in my experience about CMX. So I'll, I'm going to talk about real-time location services. Uh, so li a little bit about me. Uh, I am. I consider myself a maker. Uh, I like to hack around. I like to play with uh, different things, uh, and I like to bring things together. And uh, as part of DevNet, I get to love. I, I really get to do that. Uh, I'm a breaker, so I break rules a lot. Okay, so and that's where like you know a lot of innovations really happen when you start breaking rules. Uh, and the third thing is like w what get. Uh, gets me going is like I like to meditate, uh, so that's what uh, that's what uh, makes me going. So that's me. Uh, so the reason the reason I wanted to basically talk about this is I really love APIs. Okay, and one of the things that I wanted to bring uh, forth with in front of everybody is like when infrastructure really meets applications, right? Uh, I wanted to talk about a, a story that I was working with uh, uh, with a with a developer, an Apple developer, and he said that he was uh, building an application for location services. And when I told him like the network can give you that information, he was like, "Really? How how's that possible?" Right? Uh, and when I talked about how using CMX or Meraki APIs, his eyes really popped open. Right? And he said. I want to know more because uh, it, today what he's trying to do is he's putting beacons all over uh, the place, trying to get location services. But when application developers get to a point where they can get to uh, the network and get that information for free, I mean, think about it that way, then you can actually start building very rich applications. So uh, and definitely, like uh, I've I've built a lot of products inside Cisco, uh, and one of the things that uh, I love working with customers. Uh, so at the end, like if people want to come up with their use cases, uh, talk about them, I'm more than happy to help about that. So uh, what, uh, this is this is what I want to go through today. Uh, I'll introduce what 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 the basic definitions of each of the terms are. Uh, I'll also talk about some of the Cisco technologies that Cisco has to offer. And there's definitely one thing that I will bring up uh, right up front is that there is no uh, like you know one size fits all kind of a solution. And you'll you'll realize that as as soon as we start talking about things. Uh, and we'll go into a little depth of talking about what what it means, right? Uh, like, you know, what? how does triangulation happen? Uh, what is virtual BLE? Uh, so you'll get to those, those things. Uh, and then, like, I'm going to talk about some use cases uh, like that definitely, like, you'll, you'll know and you can relate to because maybe they're part of your ecosystem or your customers or your uh, problem definition. Uh, at the end, like, we can go through a simple code uh, and, like, more than happy to, like, you know, walk you through the code and figure out what it does uh, so that way, like, we can, uh, like, talk about it. And then before th before the conclusions, if you have any questions, I would like, you know, like, uh, to take take questions on anything you have. So what are what are real time location services? Okay, so one of the things that if you if you see the definition of real time location services, it it tells you that it describes a system that provides you real time information about location and proximity. Now a uh, lot of people might be thinking. Uh, Oh, is there a difference between location and proximity? And I'll, I'll, I'll go through the de uh, definitions about that. And one of the things, you use these technologies to actually do navigation, to find objects, uh, to find people. Uh, definitely, that's what uh, is, that's the, and, def and for marketing purposes in, in retail, you'll actually do marketing uh, kind of applications. So uh, these, uh, that's the basic definition of RTLS. 
Now, uh, one of the things that any indoor location service actually like it requires is like you you have to see how accurate your your location service is. Uh, people who have played with it, you, you'll realize that uh, one of the things uh, is you know like CMX people who know like CMX used to be like uh, initially it used to be like 25 feet uh, now over time it's come down to three feet uh, so that's that's what I was talking about accuracy in, in terms of where it is uh, uh, and then the other thing is in accuracy is how important I mean how what is the confidence level that the system is giving you in terms of like yeah I have hundred percent confidence that this is really the position of where this person is on on the map uh, then the density right like density means like you're talking about taking multiple locations together and seeing like if I can actually track down like five tags in a particular zone so that's what that's also very important when you're doing uh, indoor location the, the the fourth one actually is one of the very important ones is the cost of the hardware and one of the things that you'll realize that if people actually do beacons you'll realize that uh, like in order to actually do a beacon everywhere you have to actually like have somebody roll a truck you uh, install the beacons uh, the other thing is that you also have to change batteries okay every now and then so like right now i'm i'm actually using a bluetooth beacon on my badge and i cannot do anything because this is like a one year one year lifetime thing once it finishes it's done right so this is something that you have to you, you have to keep on investing in bluetooth beacons uh, and and finally like there's a power consumption of of also beacons right i mean this is where like you know i have to go and change the batteries uh, the ble sometimes or, or i have to find a way to actually like uh, put it on a usb power port to make make the ble uh, power up now uh, what is the definition i mean this is a definition of uh, location services uh, as it know as we all know about out, outdoors right uh, so location again uh, the se the second one is about uh, look indoor location is based typically based on Wi-Fi systems okay so the way it works is that you have like multiple APs deployed and based on your RSSI value and for people who don't know what RSSI value is it's the signal strength of the Wi-Fi at this location so if you look up right you'll see that there are multiple APs that are hanging out right I mean so what is happening is at this point my phone when it is actually looking either connected or like even the fact that even if I have just turned on my Wi-Fi it's actually looking out for which are the SSIDs that I can connect to so that's good enough for the AP to figure out what the signal strength is where I am standing okay so that is what is used to calculate uh, where that person is on the map so that's the technique that indoor location uh, is using using some of the technologies that Cisco has already developed now what is proximity right so this is where I want want you to be a little clear because proximity means like how close you are to a particular device and when I say that it's typically done with like either beacons or virtual beacons so what you could do is like or you can do it even with indoor location but you have to find you, you got to do like think about it as you can create zones and if I'm in a zone then I am in that zone or I'm, I'm in, at very close proximity to that zone so that's how you'll get to the proximity part so I, I mean I'm I hope that you got you guys are clear about what proximity and indoor location serve indoor location is so that's the difference now uh, inside cisco right i mean there are there are multiple uh, solutions out here but i want to like bring up the first one uh, is cmx so as i told before right so there is a user uh, who has his wi-fi device it could be uh, uh, your cell phones your mac or whatever device that you have uh, it's connected to the access points and again it doesn't need to connect but it can be in just beaconing and asking what is the ssid and then the access points are connected to a WLAN controller. Uh, and then the LAN controller is basically connected to CMX MSE. So the MXC, MSE is the, 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 uh, the brain behind locating 
the device. So what it is doing is like each of the APs, they are getting that information, right? The RSSI value for, for my device is actually go going to AP1, AP2, AP3. So each of these devices is actually telling back to MSC and telling that, okay, here's a, here's a device with a MAC address X and the signal strength is Y, right? And then uh, basically CMX will use that information to do triangulation and figure out where that person is uh, exactly. So that's, that's basically what CMX does. Now CMX has a very rich API to figure out uh, and pull that information. So you can define zones, you can define MAC addresses, you can define uh, like, uh, you know, get, get information about like people, all those kind of things, that information can be brought out from, from CMX. Now, the other thing is that CMX itself has a very good analytics UI. Uh, in my opinion, Cisco can do much better, okay? Because yeah, it's a go good dashboard for administrators. But in, if you're trying to solve a customer pain point, then you need to start building applications on top of it for, uh, specifically to your use case. So, and that's, that's something what, what you could go through and figure out. So DevNet, we have learning labs uh, for understanding what CMX APIs are there. So you can actually go take a learning lab and like look at those APIs. And I have a sample code that I have already. So you can download it, you can play with it and see what, what you can do with it. And so in the apps, like I'm going to show, show you the application which is running live here. Uh, and then there is an application server where you can also do like, you know, the uh, iPhone app server. So where you can actually do notifications and stuff like that. That's what the application server is. So it will talk to MSC, get that information. And then if I want to send a notification to the iPhone uh, through iPhone notifications or uh, like Google notifications, I can use that as the app server. So that's the layering of how CMX really works on prem. Now CMX, uh, yeah, and then the application server, this is the notification that I was talking about. Now, one of the things that the, if you see here, right, so you have the Wi-Fi devices, uh, they're talking to the, the, the APs here, and then you're talking to the WLAN controllers and then the MSC. That's, that's basically how the whole flow is. And then you're also sending it to Prime. The, the reason there is a Prime in there is for maps. So you can download the maps onto the MSC. So you can actually figure out what the zones are, and you can actually do some uh, configurations uh, on the MSC. And this is, this is exactly what, what is the APIs. So you can actually use APIs to talk to the server. Now, uh, one of the things that I, I, I did not mention here is CMX also has a, a, like a cloud solution. Okay, and this is, I, it's pretty new. Uh, it came out about six months or uh, six or seven months back. So what happens here is instead of it being on-prem, this data from the WLAN controllers is actually sent into the cloud. So there is an agent that sits on-prem on and it's sending that information in the cloud. So you can actually build the same application that you are trying to build on-prem, but use the hosted version of CMX. So that's another thing that you can actually start using also. So uh, going, going back, uh, so what is hyperlocation? Okay, so this is, this is what I was talking about before. Uh, like a long time back, about like three, four years back, like the, the location-based services, the accuracy was, or was about 25 feet. Okay, think about it that way. But over the years, uh, now if you look at it, we have come down to a point where it is three feet. Uh, just with Wi-Fi. Now, that's something that the hyperlocation uh, uh, technology has actually enabled. Now, what is hyperlocation? Is it is a set of array, uh, array of radios that are inside the AP. So, think about it as like in initially, like one one radio was just doing like I mean, any AP was just having like two or three radios pointing in one direction. Now, the APs you have 24. I mean, 32. Uh, an array of 32 radios that are actually looking at from all directions. So they all are co-located together in the AP and you are getting better location. So that's, that's basically what, what hyperlocation is. So now we, have, we, are, we are to a point where you are getting uh, like accuracy of like one to three meters. 
uh, it's uh, all all network based. Uh, then there is RSSI based, which is again, as I said, it's the signal strength. Uh, it's looking at signal strength. And then there is also something called as a fast locate module. And the fast locate is is a technology that will help you locate a a, a device faster. Just because a lot of these iPhones and iPads, like they have a technology where I mean, not technology, they have a, a mode where they go to sleep very often. Now, uh, what do you do when, when that happens? So fast locate will also help you uh, get to the point where like as soon as the, the device comes up again, uh, it knows how to, because it has cached the MAC address and uh, get things faster. So uh, if you want to like upgrade it, it is like, you know, you have the old APs, it's a module that goes in, you can actually upgrade it in field. And now they also have a BLE radio uh, in there. So you can actually create uh, like a virtual, I mean, you can actually create a beacon using the AP also, as well as you can actually have, uh, <coughs> sorry, you can actually create uh, like scan and figure out beacons that are spread across. Now this is a very good thing uh, on 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 the APs because now if I like like this kind of application where I have tags the BLE tags on people or assets, uh, the the asset can I mean CMX can tell you uh, where the asset is and uh, like how long it has been st staying at that location. So that is something that is very cool about about this. Now, w one thing, just a caution about this is, uh, in my in my opinion, it, I've tried it uh, here. It takes about uh, 30 to 40 seconds for it to update the location services. So if your applications are like, hey, you know, I want to have immediately, I want as soon as somebody comes in, you want to see that, uh, that might not. Uh, it detects it very fast, but if it goes away. Uh, it takes about 30, 30 to 40 seconds to, to detect that the object has gone away. So that's something that you have to find either some other way of doing it or like work with uh, like complementary uh, technologies like VBLE that I'm going to talk about. So that's, that's basically what, what the, uh, the BLE radio that is in there. Now, uh, as I talked, talked about beacons before, right? So the uh, so the APs like can detect where where the beacons are uh, on on the map. So if you actually go to the CMX dashboard, you can see like where beacons are on the dashboard. Okay, you can place them. So one of the use cases that the BLE, I mean uh, the CMX team actually has, and they they told me about this use case is that they use this as a a, a, a beaconing or alerting beacon okay so what it means is that they want to place that beacon on let's say like some uh, equipment which is expensive and if the e equipment moves from point a to point b they want that notification to go uh, to to the admin so they want to use that uh, for for these kind of applications so uh, what is what is vble okay so VBLE is virtual BLE. Now, what is this is a Cisco technology that uh, like we, we have kind of uh, invented. And what it is doing is it has the ability to create virtual beacons. OK? So think about it. The, this, this AP that you see here, this is a virtual, virtual uh, beacon uh, AP. And you post it here, like let's say on top. And you think about it as eight, eight directional uh, beacons. And you can actually create virtual zones that actually are transmitting different beacon IDs to in that zone. So if I bring in my device, like I bring in my iPhone and I turn on my Bluetooth, if I'm standing here, I'm going to see beacon 1. But if I go on the other side of the room, I'll see uh, zone 2. So the reason is because the AP is actually transmitting uh, different beacons for, for these things. So that is what that hardware looked like. Now, yeah, so, so again, this is something that I talked about before. So the way, the way it works is like the beacons, once they are placed, uh, the information goes from the APs to the CMX, OK? And the CMX has that information, because CMX is the one who has the map information. 
we can basically know where that beacon is located by by taking that information so th they also have a look because they are looking up the map, map coordinates and figuring out where where this beacon is located so uh, again there is a lot of uh, like machine learning understanding of uh, like you know where beacons are how they travel so that you can actually figure out uh, the exact location of the beacon now this is this is what i was uh, talking about right so if if this is kind of like a restaurant scenario like if i have one ap or like virtual ble ap sitting in the top i can actually divide this room into like eight different parts and i can say that like this person is in this area this person is in the dining area i mean whatever like you know you 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 figure out and think about it as uh, a retail retail use case right where i as a customer walk in and i can be in let's say the men's section and once i once i send that information that i am in the men's uh, men's uh, section i can get back a coupon that says hey you know like uh, 20% off today right versus if i walk into some some other section i get a coupon for that uh, that thing so that's that's virtual ble uh, basically so the other other use case that that i have found uh, interesting here is like typically like in doctors offices or uh, places where people actually are in the waiting waiting area what you could also do here is like you could have the beacon counting algorithm that we have so if i have a zone that i've created and if the zone says that there are 20 beacons right now uh, based on the phone then you know that like you know uh, i have 20 people 20 patients waiting for me or uh, those kind of uh, applications can be turned on so i want to shift gears to like meraki here okay so so one technology is cmx uh, the second technology is Meraki. Okay, so now I'm just shifting gears to Meraki uh, at this point. Okay. Okay. So, so Meraki, like for people who know what 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 Meraki is, uh, Meraki is a cloud-based uh, AP manage like APs that are managed through through the, through the cloud. So all you have to do is buy a Meraki AP, take it, take it to your office, plug it in, and go to the dashboard and enter your serial number, and it just comes up. OK, so now these APs, so it's basically cloud managed. Uh, the second thing is that they also can do location, location services. OK, so they can do triangulation. They can figure out uh, like where, where a particular uh, Wi-Fi device is. And the second thing is, uh, very recently, about last year, in I think in October, they 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 came up with the the Bluetooth radio. So now they have a Bluetooth scanner and a beacon on every AP. Okay, so all the APs that are out there, they can be converted to virtual uh, to to beacons uh, or beacon scanners uh, just by upgrading your firmware. So the the hardware was always capable. All you have to do is enable them uh, via software. Now, once I do that, like uh, like I can do similar similar things that we did for CMX. Using APIs, I can actually go figure out where a particular device is on the on the network uh, uh, on the on the location map, or I can also figure out beacons where they are. So the demo that I have here. So if you come, if you if you look around in the zones. Like you'll see that there is a Meraki AP placed like about everywhere. Okay, I don't know where it it's placed here, right? So what's going to happen is like this beacon is basically saying that I am closest to this AP, and this AP is going to tell your application that these are the devices that are close to me at this point in time. So that's how like you know you can actually do this application uh, to to that. So that's the, so again the same use cases apply for even for the other uh, uh, as, as something similar to CMX. So this is the Bluetooth where, uh, as I said, all you have to do is just upgrade your APs with the new software, and you should be able to like start scanning, uh, getting beacons. So. You know, one of one of the things that I I really lo like love about about this is the proximity mar ma market. Okay, is 
is like a $52 billion market by 2020. I mean, it's a huge, huge market. I feel that if we, if we execute right, because one of the things that uh, you have to be careful about proximity and location services is uh, privacy. Okay, and you'll you'll always find people like saying, "Oh, I'm giving too much information about about myself." Okay, so but even then, like uh, Prox book, book. Okay, so that's a good website to actually go to Prox book, uh, and you'll you'll be you'll be able to see like different companies that work in uh, proximity services. Okay, and if you look at this, right? Uh, when I when I just look at this. It, uh, 20, uh, 52 billion dollar market. Uh, there's a lot to play. It's the apps. It's the infrastructure. It's retail airports. I mean, I'm working with uh, Incheon Airport in in uh, Seoul. They are actually upgrading their whole network uh, to do CMX, uh, as well as they want to enable like lot of location-based services. So there are a lot of airports that are uh, that are deploying uh, like all lo uh, location-based services uh, by by 2019. So I'm going to like move to like some of the use cases that are very typical uh, in in terms of like demos, right? I mean, in terms of like uh, uh, of uh, CMX proximity. Now, one of the things that uh, like you'll you'll see is people finding is is a very important use case. Uh, hospitals, uh, universities, manufacturing floors. Uh, this is this is a place where they want to find people okay i mean one of the use cases that a hospital actually had was uh, like where is doctor so and so like the usual usual use cases uh, paging doctor uh, so and so where are you if you if you are nearest there please call back right i mean that's the usual way of doing things now uh, imagine that like on a dashboard you know where that doctor is based on his his location, either proximate—I mean, a, a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or whatever. So I'm working with a, a, again a, a big customer in the U.S. Uh, their use case is uh, they have actually deployed CMX in 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 the aisles, okay? And they want to figure out that how many people are there in in an aisle. And once they detect that, like there are more than three. Uh, uh, three customers in that aisle, they want to write a business rule on top of it that says, send a text message to uh, like the associate who's responsible for that aisle. Uh, or send it into a Spark room, right? I mean, people who are familiar with the Spark room, uh, Spark, Cisco Spark, then you can actually send it into Spark room. So you can see all that information. So people finding is, very, is a very useful use case. The second one is about uh, like, you know, uh, job flow. Okay, and when I say job flow, uh, what it means is like think about it. Like if if I actually put a Wi-Fi device on, let's say a tractor, which is uh, not a tractor, maybe a small small little van that's on a manufacturing floor. What you could do is you can track the places where it went during the day, and uh, in manufacturing there is something called as CIP. Okay, which is continuous improvement program where they are always looking for like uh, some days in the week uh, they manufacture uh, 10, 10, 10 of the things that they're manufacturing but on some days they manufacture only f six now they are all they are they wanting they are wanting to know why this is happening right so what they are doing is they can actually put a wi-fi tag on these moving parts and figure out where where are the places where people are spending or uh, spending more time during the week. So if you see that report, then you'll know that, oh, you know what, this person is maybe like slacking off. You can figure out that, right? Or like, you know, it's waiting in a particular zone for a longer time. So there's a problem in that zone. So that's that's there. And then expensive, expensive things, right? I mean, if you want to track those kind of equipment, that's another use case that uh, you can use for, so people, job flow and the tools uh, that you, I mean, uh, like, you know, the assets that you want to track. So geofencing, right? So geofencing is another application. So uh, one of the use cases that, uh, I mean, we have a we have lot of fun in the office, okay? So what we have done is whenever our boss walks into the office, 
we actually have a light uh, that turns green. Okay, so everybody in office knows that the boss is around. Okay, so this is a simple use case, but it is it is a way to tell that uh, using proximity Wi-Fi location services, you you can send alerts. Uh, you can do cool, like you know you can actually write business rules that the asset is walking out of the door. Uh, those kind of things you can enable using this. So geofencing is is a, a pretty cool application that uh, you can enable. Uh, and this is this is the tool utilization, right? So this is what I was talking about before. Like you know on a manufacturing floor, you want to like uh, find paths of congestion. Uh, you can actually like. Uh, so CMX, what you can do is using location as as a map, right? So you can figure out where a particular device has been going during the day. At the end of the day, you can see the report of a particular. You can say that for this MAC address, tell me where all it has been. And you can actually figure out the, the whole map. You can find utilization. You can figure out whether, uh, like, you know, what what is the causes that it could happen because you'll know the time so sometimes there are location uh, services which because of like based on time there are uh, problems that happen so that is that is to do with tool utilization uh, this is this is the workforce uh, productivity uh, like use case now one of the things that you'll see is like let's say that I am in the manufacturing floor okay and what I want to do is uh, I want to monitor my my workers whether they are they are working on a particular uh, thing for more than uh, not to work on that thing for more than two hours because uh, it's heavy equipment. Uh, they, you have to rest people for maybe 15 minutes before they go back and start working on it. So just by putting like a hel uh, a Wi-Fi device or a beacon in their helmet. Now, what you can do is like you you know that I'm taking care of my employees because it's also it it's also not sometimes like you know for people who are supposed to stand up for eight hours uh, or wear a helmet for eight hours, it's actually not good. So you want that helmet to be off and kept for some time. So those kind of uh, work workforce productivity use cases are also like popping up uh, more and more that I've seen. Okay, so this is this is where I want to show a demo of what what I've done here uh, in the in the DevNet zone. So so what you see here, right, is like the use case that I talked about before, right? I mean, all of us are wearing uh, these badges now. I for some reason like not ev not everybody is showing up now. I don't know why, but this is a live dashboard. Uh, which is basically tracking people, right? Now we are getting information pushed down to our application, and this is an application that we have we have written uh, in DevNet, and uh, like the retail store that I was talking about before, uh, they are actually we are piloting this application with them. So this is something that uh, like we can actually like use to track track people and uh, associates where where they are. So think about it. These are all the DevNet people, and like, let's say that I want to send a text message to, uh, like, Colin here, right? So what I can do is not just look at like his like uh, where he is, but also look at his profile, right? I mean, what is he? What is his basic uh, expertise? Or let me look at Mike. Let's say, look at his profile. Uh, he also didn't write any expertise, but but you can actually look at people and and look at their expertise and figure out like this guy has written a lot of exper expertise, right? So one of the use case that that we are going to have like at Cisco Live US is like you as uh, as as a customer walk in into like meet the engineer. So we have the meet the engineer zone uh, somewhere in Cisco Live, and you walk in and you say, hey, you know, I'm here to meet an expert in let's say ACI. You heard about this thing, uh, thing, I, and you want to know. So what you could do is technically uh, go go to this dashboard. I can just search up uh, like uh, who by by typing ACI. If there is so there's no ACI. Let me see CMX. CMX. So there is. There's nobody right now who's on CMX, but but you get the idea, right? So you you can basically find people, as well as you can find people based on on their expertise. 
so this is this is a this is a demo that that i mean and this is something that i wanted to show you because this is a real application that you can actually start building or using even in your environment so that 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 brings me to the end of my presentation and so okay so actually let me let me talk about the apis so uh, how many people know what rest apis are so that way i can just give an so okay so just bear in like i'm going to give a little bit of uh, like api 101 here okay so what what is a rest api right so a rest api is uh, think about this is the cmx msc that i was talking about before like what you would do is from your browser or from your application uh, you would actually do an HTTP request, okay, to the application, and the application sends back that information. Now, in case of MSC or the CMX, even the Meraki, what happens is you you ask for an API. Like for example, CMX has an API to say, tell me how many devices are currently on this floor, okay? Uh, so I can use this API, go and run that API, and CMX will come back with. A, a, with a payload that says, here's the data, go figure out how many. So you have to parse that data and say, OK, I got 100 devices that are currently in this, in this area. So basically, you, it's, a, it's a get request, uh, get, I mean, it's a pull, it's a send a request and get an answer. Now, there is one more type here. So what happens is there is something called as web hook. Okay? Now, in that case, what happens is the server will keep on sending you notifications. So the Bluetooth use case that I was talking about, right? What happens is like if a Bluetooth beacon moves from point A to point B, uh, you don't want to go and ask, right? Because if I do this, then the API, it's already gone. So what happens is CMX will send you that information to your application saying that I see a movement on this device. So they are actually sending you a notification. And then it's up to the application how to handle that information. Okay, so there is a so that's basically like what what de, like you know the REST APIs are usually done used for. Now, uh, in case of uh, like you know the REST APIs, like this is this is a sample of like you know when I ask uh, like what give me give me the data for uh, for uh, the number of clients. So this is kind of the data that will come back, okay? And you'll actually see that it will tell you information about the floor, which floor this device is on, the uh, the map width, length, the height, and then it will also tell you the x and y coordinate of where that particular device is. So that way, like you can actually map it on on the f uh, actual uh, application. So that's. That's basically like what uh, what what you can do with uh, with the APIs. Now there is a sample code that I've already like uh, put in my GitHub. Uh, so please feel free to actually use it uh, to to get notifications from from CMX. And we also have in DevNet in the sandbox we have a CMX that is already hosted. Okay, so you don't need to go buy a CMX right now. You can actually go play with it, uh, write your own application, and it will send you notifications. Okay, so if you can by by hand, you can actually change something, and you'll see a notification come back to you. So you can actually start playing with it right now. So this is this is the GitHub uh, like repository uh, where you can actually find that that sample code for getting zone device count. So what I've written is like. Uh, on, on CMX, you can actually set set the type of notifications that you want to receive. So what I've done is I'm saying that I want all types of notifications to be enabled on this floor. OK, so whether a device is coming in, going out, uh, whether it's turned off, whether I, whatever, whatever it is, I want to have that information sent to me. And then I will decide what I want to do with that information. So in this case, like this, this application that, that you have here, it will actually get that notification and it will do a device count in that zone. So if a device was here and it moves out to another zone, it will count, uh, it will make that count zero, zero over here and make it one on the other one. So that's, that's what this, uh, this application will do. 
So uh, this is uh, this is the end of my session here. But uh, I am free to like uh, if you have any questions or any technology questions, uh, free to answer answer those. Which ones? The sides slides are available. Yeah, they should be available. So was this was this informative? Like, was it uh, something that you were looking for, uh, like when you came here, or was it a little uh, different? Yeah. Okay. More technical. This was more technical. Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. So if uh, if no questions then we are done. Thank you so much.